Hey you guys, it's me, Laura. I'm a homeschooling mom of three kids, ages four, eight, and 11. And today I am going to share with you the books on our bookshelf from the ancient history time period. Charles W. Eliot once said, books are the quietest and most constant of friends. They are the most accessible and wisest of counselors and the most patient of teachers. Books have always been a powerful part of my life. Through the stories contained in their pages, I've unlocked new ideas, learned of different cultures, explored the meaning of life, and been inspired by those who have walked before me. Pull up a comfy chair and grab your favorite drink. I'd love to take you on a tour of my bookshelves, and who knows, maybe we'll pull out a book that opens up a world of possibilities for you. Now, one thing to keep in mind, these are not all the books that we own from ancient history. <laughs> there are some books that are woven throughout. I have some geography sections as well that talk about different places in the world. And so, for example, some of our ancient Egypt books are also with Africa and things like that. But these are the general ones. This is an area of our bookshelf that clearly um, we could do a little bit better on. <laughs> we have some holes here. There's a lot of stuff missing. So I definitely um, would like to hear in the comments below what some of your favorite ancient history books are. They can be nonfiction, fiction, it doesn't matter. But I would love to hear what some of those are. Then I'm going to go ahead and get started. I've broken, the, broken these up into three groups. I have one like set of books that I'm going to show you. And then I have religious stuff that's related to biblical history and then just general ancient history as well. So the first thing I'm going to show you is this set of books from Usborne. You have probably seen in some of my other walkthroughs some books from this set as well. It's purchased as a set. It's their, I think it's called their Beginner's History set. I'm not sure, <laughs> but I'll have all that information linked for you. But these all come from there and these are really great books because they have a lot of information. They're good for new readers. They're good for if you just need a little bit of information, like if you want your kids to do a little bit of research for like a paragraph style report or um, something along those lines, these are really good because there's a lot of stuff in here, but there's not a lot of text compared to, you know, what you would normally see, so it's not overwhelming. So, like I said, really good for even older kids for just a really quick reference, good for um, learning readers to read on their own, and these are just really great books. So the ones that I have in this category from this, now this is not all in the set, this is most of them, but I have the Celts, Vikings, the Maya, the Stone Age, Egyptians, the Iron Age, Romans, and Ancient Greeks. So that is a set that we will be hanging on to for a while um, until all my kids have, in their elementary years, gone through ancient history. Um, these are just great to have on the bookshelves. Once they've all passed that, we'll probably pass these on to another family, but we've got a while because I have a four-year-old. So um, the next section that I'm going to go through, these are all Bible history type things. So they're still definitely a part of ancient history, but um, these are all biblically based resources. So this one is called Old Testament Days. You've probably seen me show some of these activity guides before, but it's just a bunch of hands-on activities, cooking, costumes you can make, things like that that have to do with Old Testament. So there's like living in tents, growing up in Ur, ziggurat. It's got stuff that's not just like a ziggurat isn't necessarily in the Bible, but it tells how it ties in and how it was part of that time period. So it looks at the broader time period as well. It's um, got a section on Egypt, a section on prophets and kings, and um, then the ancient cities. So here's something, for example, they talk about death and burial, and it gives information about what that would have been like talks about marriage and inheritance. There, now you can see that. And it's got information throughout. And then here's an activity for in Egypt and out again, baking bricks. So it tells you all the supplies that you need and what you can do to make your own bricks like they used to make them. Um, there's also things like um, jewelry that you can make in here. 
um, a serpent headed throwing stick. It's got mapping activities and just all sorts of stuff kind of throughout here. These are, it's very typical of all the books um, in this kind of activity guide series. This one is falling apart. This one is sentimental. So not all of these books are, I mean, these are our books. These are some very sentimental books in here too. This you can still get. It is Noah's Ark by Peter Spire and I should probably update, but this was my copy when I was a little girl. And this is, I'm gonna try to show you without it falling apart. I need to tape it up properly, but this is the story of Noah's Ark, but it's a wordless book, which I enjoy having some wordless books around because they're really a great way. You can do so much with them for so many different ages um, and stages. You can have the kids write their own narrative. They, little kids can tell you the story. You can tell them there's lots of conversation that goes on. So this one needs a little bit of love, but this is definitely a favorite on our bookshelf. So this is a book called The World Needs Beautiful Things. And this is a story about, I'm not gonna say his name right, Bezaliel, who is in the book of Exodus. And this is someone who helped build the temple um, in the wilderness, the, some of his supplies were used, and this is just kind of a fictional story about him as a child going through and collecting these things along the way and how they ended up being needed and being used to build the beautiful temple. So this is just kind of a fun, um, you know, what if kind of book about um, that time in history. This is Twas the Morning of Easter, and this is just a picture book that tells the story of Easter. Um, with very, very be beautiful illustration and artwork. And so this is just one that we have on the shelf as well that we can pull out and read at Easter time. And this is another sentimental one. This is just a Bible story book. It's called The Living Bible Story Book. And there's nothing particularly special about this particular Bible story book. It's just Bible stories. It's kind of old at the end. It's got little questions that you can talk about. But what is special about this book to me is this right here. So this is a note from my grandparents. This was given to me, let's see, um, at my dedication, I think my baby dedication in 1985. So that was the year that I was born. So this book is very special to me because of that note and because of all that. This is not a book that I will part with anytime soon, but um, my grandparents are no longer with us. So that makes this extra special. So I will hang on to this for sure. So now we're moving on to more of the general ancient history. Ooh, got teary-eyed. You guys, you see books, books, some of these books are sentimental. Books can really mean a lot to us in our lives. So moving on, you'll notice that there's a lot of Roman stuff here because I have a child who really loves ancient Rome and Roman soldiers and all of that, but there's a good mix too. So this is a book, The Golden Goblet. You may have heard of it. It is takes place in ancient Egypt. And this is a story that was a read aloud in my eighth grade class. I really enjoy it. I don't remember as much of the storyline as I wish I could, but I know that it was an important story and it stands out to me. I don't actually remember any of the other read alouds that we read that year in school, but I do remember this one. So um, it might've been seventh grade. I'm pretty sure it was eighth grade, but maybe seventh grade. But anyway, um, I definitely wanted to um, get this. I was able to pick it up for a discounted price because I want to share it with my children as well. So this is on our bookshelves for that. This is Look Inside mummies and pyramids I love the look inside books the kids love the look inside books there's just so many flaps to lift so many things to see um, this is just the kind of book that we just love sitting down together and looking at together and the kids will enjoy sitting down by themselves and lifting all the flaps and looking at all of the things and so we really enjoy having these books this medicine through the ages series I have most of the series not all of it but I got this when um, Samuel was really interested in medical stuff for a while and so I purchased these books for that. I'm glad I did. They're kind of hard to find now and I find them really interesting. They're really more geared, I would say, toward a middle grade and up kind of level, but it's super interesting to go through the history and this, it talks about all the different places and the way that they practiced medicine and what they did with medicine. And it's interesting with this series as it changes over time. Now, every once in a while, you can still find these on places like thrift books. So if this is something that you have a child who would be super interested in, definitely would recommend it. It's also, if you have a medical minded child, this is a great way to tie history in, in an interest led way because it's medicine throughout history. And of course that 
when you're looking at how they did medicine, you learn a lot more about their culture and what was happening too, which is really cool. So I really enjoy this series. I probably will, if I can, find the other ones, build it out eventually, but um, I do know that these are not in print anymore. At least they weren't the last time I checked, unless they came back in print, which I don't think they did. But this is a super, super good series. So we have the ancient medicine one as well. This probably belongs more in geography, but I decided to put it in with my ancient history. It's the Student Bible Atlas, and I guess this probably went with my Bible stuff. I put it in the wrong group. But I put it in ancient history because I am not going to look at this when I'm looking at modern stuff. I'm only going to look at it when I'm looking at biblical and ancient stuff. So I went ahead and put it in that section of the the um, bookshelf. But it's just an atlas. And it's got the Bible places and the Bible times. Um, and that's pretty much what it is. So that is there for our reference. This is Us Born Romans. And I am not sure. I haven't checked. I'll check maybe and leave it in the comments below if I think about it, but I don't know if this part is actually in the Usborne Dictionary, if it's complete standalone, something, I think this is standalone. I do not think this is information that is in the Usborne um, History Encyclopedia. I'm looking at it over there as if I can tell by looking at the spine, but this has really in-depth stuff about ancient Rome, the founding of Rome, the early Republic. I mean, it's got, this is the, the index or the table of contents here. There's quite a lot and it is pretty in depth um, in what it what it includes. And um, my son, who loves ancient Rome, loves this. This is internet linked. I have not done the links with him yet. I'm hoping that we can do a unit study on ancient Rome, and we will probably use this as our spine, and we will probably do the links and have a jolly good time learning all about ancient Rome. So that's that's another good one that we have. And this. Um, I've mentioned this before, you will see these pop up at various places in my bookshelf. This is the Honest History magazine. Um, they're really more like solid books, like activity books with activities in them. But these are so good. Um, and I will definitely put a link to it below. They have all different kinds of history and they take a well-rounded approach. So this is Story of an Empire. So this one is all about ancient Rome and it has things like their coins, um, maps of Rome, coloring pages, timeline of ancient events, Roman inventions. Um, it talks about some of the emperors of Rome and daily life in ancient Rome. And anyway, just all kinds of things. So I'll show you a few pages here so you can see what it's like. And these are really good, like picture book quality printing. So they will last. So even if your kids do the activities in here, or even if you get them um, like a magazine, I think they're a quarterly subscription. Um, you can definitely hang on to these and keep them on your bookshelves because they are very good quality and you could certainly build an entire unit study around one of these. So who knows, maybe we'll end up using this for our spine instead of this for our spine. I don't know. It'll be hard to pick. I guess we'll see where the kids are at at that point and what will make the most sense. But that is what I have for our ancient history section of our bookshelf. As you can see, I could certainly build this out and add more to it. I will not be showing you a walkthrough of our Middle Ages stuff simply because we just did a Middle Ages unit study and I have a book basket. I have all those resources already there. So I will be sure to, in the iCard up here, list where that video is so that you can find those books if you're looking for that next in this series. Um, I'll also leave a link to that below. Um, but next I will be coming to share with you the Industrial Revolution and I might just do the Industrial Revolution in modern history. I might lump all of that together. We will see, but I'm super excited to show you those books. Let me know what I need to add to my collection. What are some of your favorites or what are some books that stood out to you here? And I hope that you have a wonderful day and that you enjoy all the books around you and the stories and everything. I'll talk to you later. Bye.